Hi I'm a sand recap and this is an animation to get. The good dinosaur, Arlo, an Apatosaurus, meets an unlikely human companion in a world where dinosaurs and humans coexist. <laughs> an asteroid left the belt 65 million years ago and sped toward Earth, as soon as it entered the atmosphere, it turned red and sped off completely missing the planet, years later, at the foot of Clawtooth Mountain, two apatosauruses named Henry and Ida are busy cultivating a field next to a river, when Ida yells, it's time. Henry sprays the crops with water from his mouth, she has two small eggs and one large egg in her nest, the smaller eggs hatch first, giving birth to Buck and Libby, Buck hits the large egg with a stick, because it continues to not hatch, when the top comes off, they find a tiny dinosaur clinging to the egg inside, Arlo slowly gets out and tries to walk, initially awkwardly falling over, Henry promises that they will all take care of the farm and mountain together as he shows them all. Buck and Libby are helping with the chores at the age of five, however, Arlo detested feeding the chickens because of his fear. Ida lures him into the coop by wrapping a bucket of corn around his neck, when he frees a chick that was stuck in some weeds, the mother chicken comes up behind him and squawks loudly, Arlo runs into Henry's corn storage silo in fear, he uses a boulder to close the door, protecting the food from scavengers, he presses his foot into the mud, stamps it on a rock, and then places it on top of the si silo after Ida tells him to make his mark. Since she built the fence, the cabin, and the three children, he tells Ida to leave her mark, Henry instructs the youngsters that they must earn the right to make their mark by undertaking a significant task for a cause that is greater than themselves. Buck and Libby have cleared trees and plowed a field to earn their marks by the time they are 10. Arlo, on the other hand, has done nothing to establish himself. Arlo is determined to finish his task, but Buck plays a trick on him, scaring him away before he can. Arlo will be taken out into the field at night by Henry, who instructs him to walk to the middle, he screams for his father after a bug lands on his nose. Henry approaches the bug and blows on it revealing that it is a firefly, he tells Arlo that sometimes you have to overcome your fear to see the beauty on the other side, he says. He then waves his tail through the grass, releasing additional fireflies, Arlo does the same thing, excited. After that, Henry informs him that he has a special task for Arlo in order for him to leave his mark. The following day, Henry takes Arlo to the silo and informs him that a creature has broken through the fence to steal the corn. He shows Arlo how to set a trap using a rope, a net, a net, and an ear of corn on the ground as bait before telling Arlo that his job is to catch it. He demonstrates to Arlo by smashing a pumpkin with a mallet, promising that he will be able to leave his mark. Arlo later hears the trap sound, he approaches with the mallet and observes a human child who is entrapped and choking on the net around his neck. Arlo lets the boy go after he lets out a sigh, but the boy approaches him and sniffs around. Arlo steps back trips over a rock, and screams as he does so, the boy runs away, startled, as Henry comes over, Henry yells at Arlo for letting the boy go when he sees the boy running away, Arlo is invited to join Henry as he follows the boy's tracks, it started to rain at that point, Arlo is worried that they will get lost, but Henry tells him that he can get home as long as he finds the river, Arlo is informed by Henry that they must move quickly because the boy's tracks are being washed away by the rain, Arlo slips and falls in the mud as thunder and lightning crackle all around them, he is advised to return home by Henry, the river overflows just then due to a landslide, before being swept away, Henry uses his strength to push Arlo to safety, Ida and the kids have a hard time keeping up with the chores now that Henry is gone, for the winter, Arlo brings corn into the silo, but he finds the boy eating it, Arlo pursues him and takes an ear of corn out of his mouth, Arlo falls into the river and cries out for help as they fight, but no one hears him, Arlo falls unconscious after hitting his head on a large rock as he plunges down the river, he discovers that he is a long way from home when he wakes up lying on a sandbar, he sees the boy at the top of a cliff and all he can hear is the boy howling, the boy jumps on Arlo's face after watching as he awkwardly climbs the cliff, when Arlo notices that the boy has vanished, he shakes him off and then climbs to the edge of the cliff. Arlo tries to find his way back home by scaling a ridge, he remembers Henry's words as he looks at the river, he sees a berry tree after walking up the river for some time, so he balances on a rock to get the berries, he loses his balance, falls, and his leg is snagged by a pile of rocks when he lands, he is stuck, so he shuts his eyes and goes to sleep. He wakes up the following morning to the sound of geysers and discovers that the rocks have been moved, releasing his leg, he wonders if the boy helped him when he sees human tracks, he continues to walk up the river as heavy rain falls, Arlo observes the other animals taking cover, but he has none of his own, 
When he hears a rattle coming from the bushes, the boy comes out and gives him a bug and a lizard, Arlo has no desire to consume either. The boy then returns with some berries, which Arlo happily consumes, he doesn't know if the boy understands when he asks him where to find more information, Arlo follows the boy to a cliff edge as he flees, Arlo collapses, his legs on one side and his mouth on the other, the young man then shows the boy a berry bush and uses Arlo as a bridge, Arlo runs toward the bush after th throwing himself to the other side. Arlo is attacked by a snake as soon as it emerges, the boy begins to gnaw on the snake's skin after grabbing its tail, Arlo realizes that the boy saved him as the snake moves on. When Arlo hears a voice saying hello, the boy and Arlo are walking up the river together, he sees a styrocosaurus with big horns as he looks around, Forest Woodbush is his name, he claims that the numerous small creatures perched on the horns are there to safeguard him, he says he could use the boy to protect Arlo because he saw the boy do so. Forrest inquires about the boy's name after Arlo informs him that the boy is with him. Arlo responds that he is unsure, and Forrest responds, I name him, I keep him. They both begin calling each other names, but there is no response, Spot, yells Arlo, and the boy raises an eyebrow at him, Spot, come here. The young man approaches Arlo, while he is returning to Clawtooth Mountain, Forrest advises him not to lose Spot. They hear a squeak as they walk back and see a gopher emerging from a hole, Spot makes an attempt to strike, but the animal quickly retreats, Spot blows through the hole with his mouth, causing a gopher to emerge and then return, Arlo does the same thing, which causes additional gophers to emerge, Arlo and Spot ran for safety when the gophers bit Arlo, making him unhappy, they end up on a ledge high above the river, Arlo is bitten by yet another gopher, and he falls into the river, Spot dives, and after him to show him how to swim as he struggles to stay afloat, Arlo follows Spot's lead and swims to shore with him, Arlo tries to shake off the leeches after realizing they cover his body, Spot aids in the removal of the obstinate ones, they keep walking until they come across some fruit, which, they both eat whole, after that, realizing that the fruit contains something, they begin to hallucinate, they both fall asleep, exhausted, they walk through a meadow when they get up at night, fireflies appear as Arlo waves his tail through the grass, Spot tries to grab one of them, but he only manages to hold onto one, Spot releases it after Arlo blows on it, causing it to glow, Spot tilts his head in disbelief when Arlo says that he misses his family, Arlo breaks some sticks into shapes of dinosaurs, saying that one of them is himself, the others are Buck and Libby, Mama and Papa, and Mama and Papa, after that, he refers to them as his family and draws a circle around them, Spot grabs some sticks and draws a circle around three human figures, he hears from Arlo that's his family, Spot covers two figures with dirt and places them flat on the ground, with Papa, Arlo does the same thing, they howl sadly at the moon together, when a severe storm strikes them the following day, they resume their walk up the river, Spot follows Arlo as he curls up under a fallen tree, Arlo climbs out at the end to see destruction everywhere and realizes he is unable to locate the river, he sees a search and rescue team of pterodactyls flying in formation in the sky, Spot flees and hides when Arlo calls out to them, Arlo is greeted upon landing by cold front, Arlo forms a ball over Spot while wedged between the pterodactyls and the T-Rexes, which are now charging, the T Rexes suddenly attack the pterodactyls and drive them away before approaching Arlo. The T Rexes help him up, introducing themselves as Ramsey, a girl, and Nash, her brother. Despite his fearful frozen state, Arlo observes the enormous scar on the face of their father, Butch, as he approaches. Arlo asks Butch for help getting home, but he tells him that they don't have time to help because they're looking for their longhorn herd. Arlo makes the offer that if he helps Spot get back home, he will let Spot sniff out the herd. Spot is able to locate their tracks but feathers on the ground suggest that rustlers have taken the herd, they locate the herd grazing in a nearby field after. Following the tracks, Butch tells Arlo to stand on a rock near the herd, scream, and then stop when the rustlers charge at him. Knowing that the rustlers are waiting, Arlo and Spot make their way to the rock tremblingly, he makes an effort to scream, but his fear stops him, he yells in pain as Spot chomps on his leg, Arlo is approached by three raptors as they rustle through the grass, they tell him he's trespassing, and they kill people who are trespassing, the T, Rexes fight off a raptor that tries to attack them. When Butch hits a raptor in the head, it flies into the herd and runs straight toward Arlo. The T, Rexes attempt to keep up with the herd as Arlo and Spot run away. Nash is pinned down by the raptor after the raptor jumps on him and they fight. Ramsey strikes him with a tail whip just as he is about to strike, sending him flying away. Arlo runs away from the stampede behind a boulder, but the raptors can smell him nearby. Butch charges in, but two raptors force him to the ground. Arlo charges in and headbutts a raptor away, summoning his courage. Butch grabs the other by the tail and throws her away. Together with the T, Rexes, 
Arlo leads the herd to a safer location. Arlo, Spot, and the T-Rexes gather around a campfire that night. Ramsey tells Arlo that the cut on his forearm will leave a good scar. Nash reveals a calf scar and claims that he got it from fighting 15 stegosauruses. Ramsey claims that he once had to gnaw off his tail because he was trapped with his tail stuck under a rock and a herd of longhorns coming straight at him. He demonstrates the stub of his tail. When Arlo inquires about Butch's scar, he responds that he was drinking from a pond when crocodiles bit his face while he was taking a drink. He dismembered one crocodile by biting it in half, whipped it with his tail, and then drowned another in his own blood. He then shows off a crocodile tooth in his jaw when he opens his mouth. Arlo asserts that his papa was not afraid of anything and is done with being afraid. When the crocodiles attacked him, Butch sa says he was scared and that fear can show you what you're made of. Arlo tells them he needs to get home to prepare winter food just as the first snow falls. The next morning, the T, Rex has heard the Longhorns, and when a group of them splits up, Arlo runs ahead and uses his tail to break off a tree to bring them back together. Arlo sees the summits of Clawtooth Mountain as he climbs a slope, and the T, Rex has bid him farewell. Spot joins Arlo when he gets close to home and lets out a happy howl. They hear a second person howl suddenly. Arlo picks Spot up because he can't bear to think about losing her, so he walks back to the river. Arlo's feet become entangled in the mud as a storm approaches. He sees the pterodactyls flying around when he looks up. Thunderclap grabs Spot with his talons as they fly in and use their wings to attack Arlo. Arlo tries to back away as the other two approach but he loses his balance in the mud and slides into the brambles. Below, when he tries to break free, the brambles cling to him, the pterodactyls follow Spot and Thunderclap, unable to reach Arlo. Arlo tries to escape one more time, but a loose rock knocks him unconscious and hits him in the head. Spot howls back when Arlo climbs the mountain and howls for him, pterodactyls surround Spot as he observes him inside a tree hollow. They attempt to free Spot by hitting the tree. Arlo rushes in and slams a pterodactyl into the river with his head. Arlo is lifted into the air by Thunderclap and the others, and Spot howls from the tree. Spot goes deeper into the tree when Thunderclap flies down to him. Arlo hits a tree while still in the air causing it to fall and land on the pterodactyls. Another pterodactyl approaches Arlo as he falls to the ground. Arlo flings a tree into the pterodactyl with his tail, knocking it into the water. Arlo runs up and lets out a loud roar when he sees Thunderclap still attacking Spot, scaring Thunderclap away. Spot's tree is swept away when a flash flood approaches. Arlo makes an attempt to save him, but he can't get close enough. Arlo is thrown into the river by falling debris caused by the flood. He sees Spot unconscious inside the sinking tree as he struggles to swim. After hearing a waterfall ahead, Arlo swims to him. He wraps himself around Spot when he reaches her, and they both fall over the edge. Spot opens his eyes as Arlo lifts him out of the water at the bottom. Arlo relaxes by putting his head down and exhaling. They continue their journey home the following day when they hear a man's howl. He is joined on the hill by a woman and two children, they observe. Spot leaps off his back as Arlo slowly approaches. The family gathers around the father as he rubs Spot's hair and sniffs him, ready to continue. Spot jumps on Arlo's back, but Arlo pushes him away. Spot comprehends when Arlo draws a circle on the ground all around them. Arlo waves goodbye to Spot with a hug. The farm in the distance with the harvest still on the ground is visible as Arlo walks the remainder of the way alone. Mama, Buck, and Libby were worn out but continued to work. Mama raises her head to see Arlo approaching. Arlo. They all rush up to him and give her a hug as she cries. Arlo's and Papa's mud footprints are right next to each other at the top of the silo. Arlo was at home after completing a significant act for a greater cause.